Three years ago, Fall Guys had one of the most successful launches in gaming history. Today it's overshadowed by its clone called Stumble Guys, which has over five times the downloads. In this video, we're investigating one of the most mysterious phenomena in gaming history, and it all started in August 2020. In the first month of Fall Guys, we witnessed a level of popularity that was different from anything we've seen in the past few years. Dr. Disrespect and PewDiePie were playing the game together. It was that big despite not even being free to play. It brought something new to the battle royale genre and provided a great multiplayer experience during a time where we needed one. In September, things began to shift as a new challenger appeared, Among Us. Despite being out since 2018, Among Us suddenly reached an even bigger level of virality than Fall Guys, despite being similar in many ways. While Fall Guys was sufficient as a party game that brings brings people together, Among Us did an even better job of this. Playing these same 20 levels in Fall Guys began to feel stale, and as players became more skilled, the game began to feel less welcoming for casuals. On the 24th of September, Stumble Guys launched on the Google Play Store only 46 days after the launch of Fall Guys. With so little development time, Stumble Guys didn't offer a quality gameplay experience compared to Fall Guys, which had been in development for years. However, it does have two advantages, being free and being available on mobile. Among Us and Stumble Guys share both of these advantages, making them much more accessible than Fall Guys, which you could only play on PC or a PS4 with half the frame rate. Season 2 of Fall Guys was launched on October 8th, and the reception to this update was mixed at best. It added 5 new levels and some extra content, but this update by itself wasn't enough to refresh the gameplay experience. Over the rest of the year, Among Us continued to dominate the gaming market, and Fall Guys continued to fall off. On February 16th, 2021, StumbleGuys made its debut on the iOS App Store, now available on both of the major mobile gaming platforms. This is about 5 months after launching on the Google Play Store, which is plenty of time for the developers to fix bugs and add more content. In March, Fall Guys was acquired by Epic Games, and this led to a lot of polarizing changes that we saw in Season 4. This season added an impressive 9 levels to the game, but also came with decisions that had negative reception, like adding skill-based matchmaking to solos. Meanwhile, Stumble Guys is gaining traction despite Fall Guys remaining dormant. It looks like its player count rose at the beginning of 2021 and plateaued for the rest of the year. Stumble Guys made another big move on October 7th, 2021, when it launched on Bluestacks and became available for Windows, Mac, and Linux users. This is the first time that the two games started competing for market share on PC. Interestingly, it was priced at $8 on Steam, but came with access to the Premium Pass basically a bunch of cosmetics. Not being free would explain its slow launch on Steam, but it gradually built momentum and peaked at 651 active players in 2021. It had way more on mobile, but it's interesting to compare this to Fall Guys, which stabilized around 9,000 active players on Steam across the entire year. 2022 was by far the most eventful year of this saga. Stumble Guys made a Facebook post on January 31st, announcing that they reached 50 million active players, and it's difficult to figure out why it took until early 2022 for this game to take off. They didn't release any game-changing updates, instead they took the approach of gradually drip-feeding content into the game one level at a time. With this strategy, they can avoid the long content drought that Fall Guys endured through the first half of 2022. It's also worth noting that Stumble Guys lacked a big social media presence before this post. On April 1st, Stumble Guys became free on all platforms. It grew from 800 to 8,000 active Steam players during this time, and grew at a similar scale on mobile. Fall Guys has not had any new content added for a while, but 45 days later, they finally strike back when announcing their biggest update by far, Free For All. At this point, 7 seasons of levels have been added to Fall Guys, and the variation in gameplay made it a lot more fun. Not only was the game better, but it became more accessible by going free to play and adding support for Xbox and Switch. This update completely revived the Fall Guys community and put a dent in the advantage that Stumble Guys had until this point. Fall Guys experienced major growth by the beginning of July, going from 10 million downloads to 50 million finally reaching the same number that Stumble Guys did in January. But Stumble Guys isn't stuck at 50 million anymore. Now they're at a whopping 163 million. 
The rise of Fall Guys ended up fueling the rise of Stumble Guys, and the quality of Stumble Guys got better over time, now rivaling the gameplay experience of the original. The relationship between these two games becomes a much different conversation now, and besides accessibility, this is for one reason, who each game is competing against. When you're playing Fall Guys on PC or console, you can choose to play AAA games instead like Elden Ring and Tears of the Kingdom. On mobile, Stumble Guys doesn't have to compete against games of that quality. Instead, they're competing against the likes of Subway Surfers and Candy Crush. The point is that this type of gameplay is very strong on mobile, but relatively weak on PC and console. Remember that Epic Games and Apple got into a legal battle over monetization on Fortnite Mobile, which prevented Epic from releasing a mobile version of Fall Guys on the App Store. If there was a mobile version, we might see very different player counts for both games. In September, things began to get really ugly when Fall Guys released their next season, which came with the controversial decision to start vaulting some of the pre previous levels. The game had just solved its issue with level variants and then completely undid all of that progress. People were understandably pissed at this decision, to the point where hashtag save Fall Guys started trending, and the community basically asked Epic Games to stop being Epic Games. It seemed like the developers were having a difficult time fixing bugs across all of the new platforms. We would see additional levels get vaulted due to these bugs, restricting the level pool even further. Meanwhile, Stumble Guys also got acquired by a company called Scopely. I found it interesting that Fall Guys was bought at one of its low points, while Stumble Guys was bought at its peak. When a game gets acquired by a larger company, it ideally adds more content and developer support, but skill-based matchmaking and vaulting seem to do more harm than good. Getting acquired by Scopely seemed to do a lot of good for Stumble Guys because it's an easier game to manage on only mobile and PC. This contributed to Stumble Guys reaching an all-time high of concurrent Steam players, and Fall Guys reaching an all-time low in the same month. By the end of the year, Stumble Guys became the fastest growing mobile app of 2022, and Fall Guys lost 86% of its player base. I would never have imagined this turn of events three years ago. There's one more question. How are both of these games doing this year? Well, Stumble Guys continued their usual strategy of drip feeding content into the game, while Fall Guys suffered its biggest content drought yet, going from November to May without a new season, that is half a year. But there is something that both games have handled extremely well, collaborations. Epic Games already knew how to score collaborations from Fortnite, so they applied the same thing to Fall Guys, and it worked. From Final Fantasy XIV to Sonic and even Spongebob, they've done a great job with cosmetics. Stumble Guys had equally impressive collaborations with the NFL, Barbie, and Mr. Beast, so they were able to match Epic's pace on this. On May 10th, Fall Guys launched their highly anticipated creative mode. This is a major step forward, as a level builder is one of the best things a game can have for longevity. There were a total of 20 levels made by the developers in creative mode, which sounds amazing, right? But there's a few problems with this. Since the developers were only using the same tools that we now have access to, it limits the quality of the actual levels. And when they started dominating playlists, players missed having levels that pushed quality over quantity. Besides that caveat, Fall Guys is in a decent spot right now in terms of how fun it is to play. It received only a 31% bump in player count when this update came out, and I think the lesson to be learned here is that once you lose your community, it's very hard to earn them back, even after solving the issues with level variants. Stumble Guys isn't really growing anymore, but it's not declining either. It stabilized at around 7,000 players on Steam and reached a grand total of 273 million downloads with $81 million of revenue. This game went from being considered nothing more than a ripoff to one of the most successful mobile games in history.